Uh, thank you, Rekha. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming down here after lunch. I hope this session is exciting enough to wake you up from your post-lunch uh, stupor. Uh, it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, two people who have been extremely active in uh, citizen activism and citizen movements in the city. Uh, they have used uh, and they are, they've kind of made a name for themselves for being really innovative in the way they plan their campaigns and in using different kinds of technologies and platforms to promote their messages. Uh, firstly, I'd like to ask uh, Divya Narayan to come up, please. Uh, so Divya is the campaigns manager for air pollution and climate change at uh, jetcar.org. Uh, she has been in the environment and health space for over five years now. And uh, she has a background in public health and human rights. She's worked on public health, energy, pollution, and other environmental issues in India. At Jetka.org, uh, she works primarily on air pollution and climate change campaigns, uh, for example, garbage burning in Bangalore, and issues around thermal pl power plant emissions. Uh, she manages campaigns on air alert, which we'll, which we'll talk about a little bit. Um, Jetka.org's uh, campaigning platform that allows people to start, run, and deliver their own campaigns on anything related to air pollution. Uh, the second person uh, I'd like to invite is Srinivas Alavaldi. Uh, he strongly believes that online activism will not make any real difference and that the only way our political class is uh, to discipline our political class is by showing up in numbers uh, on the street as that's the only language that they seem to understand. However, he's particularly passionate about using new and effective ways of communication to aggregate people power. Uh, he's one of the founding members of the Steel Flyover Beta movement, which many of us in Bangalore are familiar with. Um, uh, um, uh, it galvanized thousands of Bang Bangaloreans to action under the Citizens for Bangalore umbrella. Uh, all their volunteer uh, energy propelled CFB to march ahead post steel flyover beta uh, to switch to the Beku mode with spirited, highly visible public campaigns uh, such as the Chukubuku be uh, Beku uh, for suburban trains and the Bhaspagya Beku uh, to double the buses and half the fares. Recently, they also held the Beku Vera Sante to mark uh, the one year anniversary of the steel flyover beta and published the Beku Beda Sante Citizens Manifesto. In the past, he is one of the founders of Corruption Saku, an online corruption movement that led to the India Against Corruption and campaign for progressive candidates. Apart from civic issues that he's currently engaged in, he's passionate about fixing malnutrition and primary education as he believes that creating a level playing field with equal opportunities is our fundamental duty. And yes, he is another software professional from Bangalore. <laughs> um, thank you both for coming here. No, I can sit here this way. So I'll uh, try and be as uh, less interventionist in this uh, panel as possible and try and give as much space to them to speak about their campaigns. So starting off, I'd like to give, uh, I, uh, sorry, I'd like to ask both of you to give a brief description of the work that you do. Uh, I, I covered a little bit of that in the bio, but if you could go into that into a little more detail uh, about the kind of campaigns that you've worked with, uh, your past activities, your past experiences, uh, just to give everybody an overview of uh, what is it that you actually do. Divya, do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Divya. Uh, I am a campaigns manager at Jhatka.org. Um, like you said, Jhatka.org is basically a campaigning organization which focuses on um, public mobilization and using people power to create change. Um, we also use um, a lot of technology um, in terms of whether it's email, SMS, WhatsApp, creating specific tools. Um, and coming up with innovative ways to engage people around certain issues that they, care, that they care about and also enable people to be a part of a movement that they wouldn't be able to create as an individual. Um, and we work on a whole range of issues, whether it's air pollution, climate change, um, human rights, uh, minority rights, women's rights, all of that. Um, I have primarily been focusing on air pollution and climate change issues over the past one year. Uh, we have a platform called Air Alert, uh, which is basically um, a place where anybody can go and start a campaign on air pollution um, that affects their local area. It could be anything, it's just a few clicks, you start a petition, you share it, and then we help and support you um, with whether it's media, whether it's pushing it out on our list, um, or even um, engaging with your decision maker and trying to uh, see if your campaign is winnable and helping you win those campaigns. So that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. Thank you. 
good afternoon everyone thanks for being out here and thank you for organizing this and inviting me um i've been a follower of ihs for quite some time and very happy to be here and and the lunch was just superb <laughs> i i think uh, i will say a few things but uh, considering that all of you are here and this is a ihs i expect to have an interactive discussion where uh, i can learn from you and you can engage me in conversation um there is uh, a lot of things that uh, we've been trying to do uh, some with success some with not so much success i was just talking to somebody about how one of our campaigns didn't go where it, it was supposed to go but the central idea to what we are trying to do in uh, citizens for bangalore is uh, act like a, a public pressure group uh, in any mature democracy you have you know citizens and government and the people that connect the citizens to the government are the elected representatives if you want to get something done to the government you want to make an amendment to a law you want to bring about a new law you get it done through the elected representatives here that equation is completely skewed right nobody how many of you ever talked to your mp or mla anyone all right two out of the crowd so it's not a common practice to to do that right uh, and why it happens i can talk for two hours on that but i think you'll kick me out if i say those things our electoral politics has completely gone bonkers so therefore we actually don't have real representation in the government so how do you now force the politicians or the, or the people in government to make things happen so we after doing a bunch of things over the years realize that the, there's only one language that the politicians understand i'm not talking about money i'm talking about numbers politicians understand numbers uh, they think that people like us uh, that will raise voice or do some social media thing we are non consequential we, we don't make any real difference to the electoral outcomes or how what do we know about the real people and real problems that's the attitude so how do you counter that you counter that by numbers you can't do that by saying no no the lot of people are upset about this lot of people want this to happen so this has been a driving force for cfb it is a, a pressure group in western lingo you can call it it is a we don't dictate terms we don't think we have the skills or the expertise to say what is needed but we have the expertise to say what we don't like and what we like this is why the words beko and beda keeps coming all the time take it for what it's worth we don't like the steel flyer we like the suburban train we want more buses we don't like the jay mahal road widening because it kills 112 trees and does nothing useful for it so that's a beda this is a beku so this is how we've been building up support and i would assume we'll talk about the steel flyover a little later so i'll skip that for now uh, but the cfb has been uh, growing and growing beyond our wildest imaginations because we are a bunch of people came together to stop one little not little huge ugly steel monster and uh, um, and then it didn't stop there people wanted to go at it and i saw sri kara while walking in here he was one of the first volunteers of the steel flyer and he's still hanging out and you know we keep pulling him into campaigns and things like that so many of us are keep doing that and that's what feeds cfb uh, the other thing i want to say about cfb is is is, a, is experiment in democracy it's a citizen movement we are not an ngo we don't have a bank account we don't have an office if you give us space we'd like to hold some meetings here <laughs> next time and we try to keep it uh, you know flat organization without uh, you know um, hierarchies and and difficult decisions and all of that we try to keep it a entirely volunteer driven kind of thing it's not easy but it's doing entirely crowd funded any time we do something we seek funds so this has been the journey of cfb and uh, it is fueled a lot by the technology as you read in my introduction i don't believe that technology can solve any of these issues but technology can bring us together to fight them together on the ground with the numbers because the numbers on twitter shashi tarur might like but sidaramaya won't right so we need to understand the real politics of the country right now uh, so, so. yeah 
So I think that's that gives us a good segue into starting to talk a little bit more about the, uh, the, the primary topic of this panel, which is how technology is reframing public participation. We'll come back uh, to a little bit more to the actual campaigns themselves towards the end. Uh, but for the moment, I just want to start, uh, start with asking a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, both of you have been involved uh, with public campaigns for quite some time. Srinivas, you mentioned that you, uh, just before we started this session, that you've been involved in public campaigns in both India and the US since, since 94. And that's a, that's a very long time. It's been 20, 20 25 years at least. <laughs> uh, but, but during that time, you've also seen uh, technologies themselves change, right? And uh, what used to uh, be used uh, for campaigns earlier uh, may no longer be uh, the same kind of platforms that you're using today to push your message out. So I'd like both of you to kind of uh, talk a little bit more about this as to how you've seen uh, technologies change over time and what advantages these changes have given you, but also what kind of advantages you lost as old technology technologies were replaced with new ones. Yeah, now that you mentioned 94, um, see the <coughs> Why 94? Let's go back to 1930. A very important, significant event happened in 1930. What was that? Anyone? One of the biggest public mobilization exercises this country has ever seen. It's called Dandi March, right? The Sal Satyagraha. So what was the technology then? How did they mobilize people? How did they get so many people to march along? Women were fighting with Gandhi saying we should also be able to walk in this, right? And then they rallied support, they mobilized public, they did all of these things. Whatever period of time that the social movements, social movements happening, whatever medium of technology or communication is available, the people that are driving that change will leverage that to the maximum extent. When they can do that, it will become successful. When they do that in a way that there's an end result that's tangible, and that the result can inspire more people to join it or continue with it, then it will have a sustained run. Now, technology today has made that possible. When I first learned about uh, how a presidential election campaign runs in the US, and uh, I was a news junkie, like I was telling you, I'd follow everything and what is the strategy, there's a television debate, there is a volunteering, there is fundraising, all of that. I would happily go and enroll myself in every candidate's campaign, whether it's Republican or Democratic, enroll, see what happens. Anyway, I have no stakes in that. I was going to come back to Bangalore. But it gave me a window of opportunity to learn how these things are done. So in the late 90s, you know, um, the campaign strategy there was about uh, outreach, right? Unlike in uh, in uh, India or Bangalore and places like that, you can hardly see people anywhere in the U.S. Uh, anyone who visits U.S. for the first time will think that this place is dead. There's nobody here. And once you get out of the airport, you can't see anybody, right? So how do you do political mobilization? So at that time, this is pre-internet, pre-wireless, uh, pre-cell phone there was still political mobilization through telephone. So there'll be voter lists and vote banks and uh, phone numbers. So in the US, when you register to vote, you can tick a mark which party you like. You can say Republican, Democrat, Independent. So based on that, that information is made available to the parties. So if I am supporting you as a candidate, you are a presidential candidate and I'm volunteering for you, you will say, okay, you live in JP Nagar. Here are the people in JP Nagar that are expressed interest in my party so call them so you give me a list of 10 numbers 20 numbers and you you give it in small bites so i don't run away from you but i'll take it and i'll you know feed into that so your campaign team will build things like that and then i will make those calls i will record the responses i will submit to whoever is a volunteer coordinator that you have uh, your campaign team which is run like a professional office it's run uh, like uh, you know how things run like your uh, office and your conference right now runs. This is a political campaigns ran for years and decades there. So this is the understanding of what are the issues that the voter is talking about, right? And you'll understand whether the voter is uh, keen to support you or is he like, uh, you know, you you are um, pro-life or pro-choice. These are the issues that, that are part of that country's narrative. So you will take down all this. And your values of the candidate are different from the values of the voter 
you will say goodbye to them. But if they are closer, then you try to understand, take it to the next level. And ultimate level is where you ask them for a donation. Because once you once they make one dollar donation, they are your voters. And they will become your campaigners. Going on. So that's how technology was managed back then in that country. I moved here when the social media was taking off. And uh, oh, and the, the other thing that, that we did those days was the mass emailing uh, systems that we were talking about earlier. So they would, you would, uh, email was also a relatively new thing. Not everyone had email. So if there are uh, 200 million voters in the US, that time there will be like 50 million emails like that, right? And most of the emails will be bad and fake and all that kind of stuff because the, the system was evolving. So you track that. And if we know that somebody has read the email or said respond should click something on it, whatever, there was no uh, internet connectivity also. There's no loop with the browser and the website. It's just a plain text email, maybe a little image, that's it, that's it. So those, those were the days of the engagement using technology at that time. Um, there's a candidate, uh, Howard, I think Dean Howard, I forget his name now, but he was, how do you say, a pioneering kind of person in terms of bringing technology to uh, create uh, on the ground activism. So he would use email to do uh, what Arvind Kejriwal calls Mohalla Sabas, right? Like that. So local area uh, gatherings were organized using email, using phones and things like that. So that got people into the room and you would be surprised that when a presidential candidate walks in, there will be less than this crowd in the room and they will do it. That's how it works. Here, when JDS decides to do a campaign, now hundreds of people have to miss their flight or Sadashiv Nagar is completely <laughs> gone, all that because they are trying to show strength. There, that's not the point of it all at all. Right? It's about connecting with people, understanding them and all that. So I've learned those things there and probably what shaped my understanding of how to do public mobilization, how to connect with them. Cut to 2009, I'm in Bangalore trying to do Empower Loka Yukta. That time, Mr. Justice Santosh Hegde was here, he lived down the street right here, Sanki Tank. And he was fighting against corruption and nobody was supporting him and the government is trying to put obstacles on him. So he would threaten to resign, he would do this, he would do that and we said, look, this is not done. Karnataka is a pioneering state. Lokayakta is an amazing anti-corruption legislation that Karnataka has. And yet it is being diluted, it doesn't have teeth. So we must empower. If people, and, and that time uh, and even now, just as Santosh Hegde is a hero, right? He was a crusader against corruption. He got one chief minister out of here. He might come back again, but that's another story. He was doing all of this stuff and he needed public support. Or so I felt. He didn't tell me that. So I, th I felt it's our necessity uh, to support him. So we did this whole email and <laughs> uh, that time I think Facebook was just coming up. But you know, there was, uh, certainly my mom was not on Facebook those days. When we did the actual and uh, we created an event on Facebook, this is 2009, uh, December 9th, because it's a United Nations Anti-Corruption Day, which is why we picked the date. And um, 100 and, I don't know, 80 people said, yes, I'm going, like, like they're going to an event. So I go up there and those days, I was also new in India and Bangalore, so I took my kids, uh, family, everybody, and when I landed up at the MS building where the Loka Ekta office is and where we were supposed to take out a rally with these hundreds of people, there was exactly one other person. And she's from Citizen Matters, a reporter, trying to cover this event. <laughs> so that left an impression on me about people's level of commitment online versus what they'll do on a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. at MS building. So without you know, saying too much about the topic. So I have a very, very healthy suspicion about what people say or do online. And I double check it and I cut it down by like 110%. And if 100 people say they'll come, I'll think it's only me that will be there. And though I plan accordingly from there. Thank you. Uh, Divya, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Uh, that's very true. Um, in fact, even for our events, when we see if, if we see that 200 people are going to show up, we know that at maybe 25 will probably come for the event. Um, but anyway, talking about technology, I am still very new <laughs> in this field. But uh, one thing, uh, we have seen some very interesting changes even in the last few years. Um, 
in india so email is still something that's not very prevalent even if people have emails they don't really check emails and if you don't check your email uh, if you don't open a few emails they go into your promotions tab if you've noticed in on your gmail if you have gmail accounts and then it ultimately becomes spam so that's an issue that we're facing when we send out emails to our members because if they don't open a few emails it goes to their you know it goes to spam and then you lose them there so one thing we've seen is that email is becoming slower for us but mobiles is way up um because one thing that we've done is um for a petition to get signatures on a petition um we offer something called a miss call i'm sure you've uh, everybody knows about it uh, giving a miss call to uh, take action um and that literally takes people 2 seconds and that is the easiest way to register an action um and we see that of course because it's easy it's convenient um you know it doesn't involve opening your laptop or opening your email tab on your phone and then going into an email and then going to a petition page putting in your details and then saying sign in terms of all of that giving a miss call is much easier so um we're actually one of the you know one of the discussions that we have at work is is email dead in india and is mobile the new thing because you have giving a miss call or even sending messages on whatsapp whatsapp is everywhere every single person has whatsapp but even if you don't have whatsapp giving a miss call is something you can do even if you have if you don't have a smartphone um so you can reach the amount of people you can reach via mobile is just way above the number of people you can reach on email so that is something that is a change that we're seeing uh, even in the last like 4 5 years so yeah um yeah so just moving on a little bit i think we'll explore this in a little bit more detail as we go further into the session uh just to come back to this question uh do different types of technologies allow you to reach uh, or different types of platforms allow you to reach different audiences do you see differences between that yeah definitely the um, like uh, you know there is a there's always a joke that there is more um, ration cards than people right in in india like that there are more whatsapp accounts than actual people right now so whatsapp beats everybody else hands down at this point of time and uh, we are also burning the internet by sending those good morning and pictures of gods and everything else so it get lost in that uh, thing a bit but whatsapp is the single most effective way of uh, connecting to a large number of people the virality that you get out of whatsapp is unmatched by anybody else right you have to log in into facebook you don't need to log into whatsapp you are there you f- you the way you send a message forward a message to whatsapp is just brilliant right you can usually it's a group so the moment it uh, it goes on a group you never know where it ends up it's impossible to take anything back from whatsapp once you are in it you're on it so be very careful if your camera is on <laughs> and uh, so i would say that that is the the thing just two days ago i was in hyderabad you know on some invitation of some other group about a certain thing and i i there was all these stalwarts sitting at the on the round table meeting i was invited as a social activist and i'm sitting in the back of the the group and you know everybody spoke it was a four three hour meeting and you know there's luminaries there and i got a chance to say a few things for three minutes so towards like third hour of the meeting or whatever and i said some things and next thing i know I, by the time i arrived to bangalore airport the thing has gone viral right i had never imagined that would happen and i as a student of communications i can only attribute it to whatsapp and nothing else so facebook is really good as well because you have um, so the issue of of uh, which platform is effective is really the issue of what kind of people are interested in what things right you know why are all these people in ihs today because they might be from different areas different religions regions whatever but there is some common thread running through all of them which makes them come here on a sunday afternoon and you know listen to some no names and sit through patiently and all of that there is certain passion certain interest in that i have done this many times myself right so now how do you get to these people that are interested in those things right if i ask all of them to come to a steel fly or beda i have like a 50% chance of them saying yes whether they show up or not i have my own doubts about that but at least they'll raise their hands right but if i go to another across the street and little italy there's like hundreds of people standing outside 
uh, they will like wait for the car to come so they can leave because they're talking to me right so how do you reach the audience that are interested in your topic so this is important so this is where any social media platform that has ability to gather people that have similar interests similar values similar passions together will be more useful to you it's as simple as that email is not like that well i'm old enough to live in a, a time when we had something called yahoo groups and google groups and that was that right even before that when i was a student in the in the us we had all the news groups i don't think any of you here know about these news groups but there were many of those that was a billboard that we would all go on a unique system and type some strange characters and you will get that right but people flock together people always like to flock together so you need to analyze what it is that they're flocking together right now right you if you want to if you are selling sarees on commercial streets right now and they are like uh, i don't know expensive khadi sarees organic uh, ahimsa this kind of stuff you need to choose your platform to go take that message but if you are doing i don't know amir khan movie promotion you you will do something else so uh, in my experience it is uh, the citizen participation in bangalore right now is uh, all about facebook twitter is um, nowhere anywhere near facebook it will probably take for a long long time for twitter to be effective in india and it serves a different purpose which is good we also use twitter it's a, it's about influencing and the the media and all of that uh, but uh, if you want to convert online to offline this is where my personal formula which i should write about sometime now that i'm talking about it to you you if you can take a person from facebook to whatsapp you can get him to the ground campaign so that's been my experience and this is how steel fly or beta happened i think you have further questions where i can talk about it and i'm glad shikhar is sitting somewhere here but he can be my witness to all of this stuff that i'm talking about he's he's seen it happen so so that's my order so you can start with wherever but you take them from place to place to place and you bring them to whatsapp you bring them to action you know that that's how it works for me at this has been my experience yeah so um yeah that's true and uh, so for us we um like how shrinwa said um you need to know what people are interested in and like where they flock whether it's online or offline and so at jhatka we do a lot of um testing uh, ab testing of different messages of messaging different um to in uh, and and a way to assess that is so for example on sms we have 160 characters so how do you effectively convince somebody in 160 characters very difficult and if even for testing we have we use different angles to see what the response rate is what the share rate is and that's how you know what's working for example for air pollution uh, we were testing you know initially when we started our air pollution campaigns we wanted to see what part of air pollution really clicks with people because air pollution is a very very wide very broad area and um so we tested different things we tested um just generally environment um trees uh, a few other things and uh, generic health and um, children's health and children's health clicked with everybody every single time you write anything about children's health and that's what it clicks so um we do a lot of message testing there in terms of so in terms of sms even for email we do testing uh in subject lines we test um we test subject lines we test uh first paragraphs of emails we do ab testing of two emails where we change the first paragraph because we also um test bolding in uh emails because a person spends maybe 7 to 15 seconds on an email when you scan your email so what are the words that pop out that make it you know that that allows you to convince them so those are the kind of testing that we do um and so yeah like i said i mean email is one thing that we're doing testing on but we're also seeing our open rates go down slowly because everybody's on mobiles um on social media um one thing that we focus on are facebook ads so using facebook ads because if while while you're creating your ad you can target your ad according to um uh, the the passions and interests of people so you can actually you have different tags environmentalism lakes pollution and so 
it will target these ads to people who are interested, who like certain pages. So that is another way to reach people that you may not reach through your organic posts on social media. So um, even social media testing is huge. You can even, we have um, ads with missed calls where if people click on that little phone there, it will directly give a missed call. So um, there are missed calls, there's donation, there is uh, RSVP to events. So there are different types of Facebook ads that we also um, are doing testing with. So, um, and on Twitter, again, like he said, Twitter is still, is still a little slow in India, but it's an excellent way, like he said, to reach your decision makers, to reach your targets, to reach media, to um, uh, you know, get the attention of certain journalists that you really want um, you know, them to take, get, you know, get attention of. So um, for that, that is primarily why we use uh, Twitter and also maybe to get a certain hashtag trending because all journalists are usually flocking around uh, Twitter to look at what's trending, so, yeah. Um, do you find that certain f platforms like Facebook also help you uh, deepen uh, engagement, like getting people to come back to the kind of campaigns that you're involved with, or do you feel that that's much more likely if they finally come offline and they come out to the streets? Yes, ultimately engagement is higher when they come out on the streets. That's when you truly know that um, they're passionate about it. But um, deepening engagement on Facebook is also difficult to track because you don't know if, you know, if only if somebody shares your particular post, you know, you think they're sort of um, involved in it. But again, deepening engagement is only over mobiles. Either you have WhatsApp groups, um, you create local groups in different regions of the city um, where you you know you create these volunteer groups and then get them on ground because that is literally the only way to bring people on the ground um, and I, I haven't we haven't seen effective conversion on Facebook from Facebook to on ground that has been a little difficult but mobile to on ground activity is easier definitely. yeah we um, being a no money citizen movement we don't have any means to do ads or anything like that and also don't buy into that at this point of time it's uh, if you're trying to uh, make somebody notice your brand like you are you are come up with a new umbrella and everybody should know there's a new umbrella ads work but if you're trying to say look we are fighting for bangalore come fight with us ads are not the way to go that just doesn't work for us so uh, in terms of engagement on facebook unlike whatsapp the engagement on facebook works much better because whatsapp the stream that goes right we have watch whatsapp nazi volunteers will stop any good mornings and you know di the digressions and all of that but every once in a while we'll get the new volunteer who's yet to get into the the scheme of things so he or she feels free to sh tell us what's happening in in trump land or something else or, you know and, and start off another tra you know discussion about world politics and all kinds of things when we are simply focused on jamal road right now right so the but Facebook, you can talk about anything you want. You want to talk about the, the, the railways project in Kodagu, how do we stop that? By all means, let's discuss on Facebook. Facebook, the way I, I personally measure success of a topic resonating with public is how are the comments going? Mm -hmm. Not likes, not shares, comments. Are people talking about it? Are people fighting over it? Are people disagreeing? Are people saying, oh, no, this is nonsense and you know i know better whatever it is right if you if you really want to uh, measure the effectiveness of your message whether it's a poster whether it's a text message or a call for action look for comments and uh, when people comment and again this is from the context of wanting to do an on the ground activism so whatever i'm saying applies to that line of thinking only not for other campaigns like political campaigns or brand campaigns that people do but in terms of citizen activism people wanting to gather if they believe that by coming there there'll be yet another warm body and therefore the will make an influence or a pressure group on the decision makers and those people will come in when they're invested in that if you are commenting vigorously on why we should have more buses or we should not have more buses or and i am able to convince you that look boss a bus is equivalent to a thousand people every day therefore it takes off 200 cars off the streets every day but 
people will say but what's the point you know you have to be crowded it doesn't come to your place it you know you need to it's not convenient then i say now we need to also lobby so that the bus not only becomes reliable cheaper but it becomes faster let's work with traffic police to see how bus can go a little faster than the rest of the things then you got the person talking right so you are not ideologically stuck in a position but you and if you look at my comments or cfb's facebook page you will find hundreds of threads like this where somebody starts out with a position is this is what are you talking about you know uh, uh, and and two okay i see what you're saying right and that that kind of thing is only possible on facebook not on whatsapp not on twitter not anywhere else but facebook so that's where i see the benefit of that uh so that so we explored this a little bit in the previous questions uh but i do know that both of you want to talk about this a little bit more um how has the relationship between online and offline activism changed over the years since you began your work uh you know uh do you feel uh, has it become deeper like be because of the engagement online or um you know do you feel there's not much difference i mean it's it's in phases so in the recent years the the number of uh, online warriors have just doubled right everybody has an opinion from uh, i don't know gaurakshaks to freedom of speech to intolerant you name it and people are like you would think that if you meet that person in real life they are going to scream and eat your head off you know they are going to so aggressive so you know all of that right when you actually meet the person he really doesn't have a strong position on it <laughs> but he just read somebody else's tweet or post and he feels so aligned ideologically because i like narendra modi i'll have to support everything somebody else below him says like that or same applies to the other party as well and oh by oh by the way in case you said something that is not in line with the position of my party you are in the other party's camp so this is the the nonsense that goes on here we have in this fight between you know trying to defend ideological positions and and there's a lot of talk about paid trolls and you know people from uh, accounts from uzbekistan and or romania acting on behalf of the bjp or the congress and all of that that's just natural it's like saying there is money politics or caste politics if party a has money politics party b also has money politics party a has caste politics they also play caste politics so they neutralize each other out we don't need to worry about it it's only the middle ground people the independents that decide the fate of these things so on social media the same thing applies they have trolls they have trolls too maybe they learn little later but they'll learn it in fact the same agency will be supplying trolls to both of them behind the scenes right so it's the normal people with real accounts and faces and jobs and lives that get agitated and all of that so they have absolutely no interest and they are in the comfort of their samsung phone or whatever it is behind them they are going off and saying whatever it is so thinking of them coming to online is next to impossible i want to take a minute uh, i'm sorry to digress little bit but we need to think about one other thing here which is what makes people actually want to do things for public purposes right what makes people want to come today last 3 days many of you must have been here what makes that what makes that is what is defined in in the students of sociology like yourself and your colleagues you know is the maslow's pyramid right you you got your basic needs met you you have a roof on your head you have clothes to wear you have food and your children are going to school whatever it is then you start thinking about your neighbor your street and maybe after some more time you have some more money and uh, you know you made it in life where you can start thinking about world and city and government all of that stuff so the the number of people that do that itself is very small right and within that people how many of them will actually go do something uh, there so a study that was done maybe 10 years ago said that an average person with education college education um this must be western study spends about 10 minutes a month thinking about government politics 10 minutes a month right so they are thinking about what movie to watch what, what uh, you know new gadget to buy or you know which football coach should i take my kid to or you know a tournament that is coming there are so many things happening they are paying taxes they are being good citizens they are voting they are paying taxes they are playing their role there is nothing wrong with that right but they still some of them will have to go do that extra bit 
So what prompts them to do that? And now that section of the people are already doing their activism online, which I read a word uh, many years ago called clicktivism, right? They are clicking away to glory, thinking that they are changing the world, they are adding their voice and all of that. Which is better than non-clicktivism, in my opinion, right? It works, it's better, it's good, not bad at all. If you guys remember Jairam Ramesh and the whole uh, BT Brinjal thing, is primarily driven through that. There was no actual protest and things like that, but because he himself was a, you know, a progressive minister, he took the concept of public uh, consultation seriously and Bangalore, the hall was full here and all of that. But now, this 10 minute thing is being bombarded thanks to WhatsApp. Okay, you joined your family group so that you can get your, uh, you know, chanting mantras or pictures of your nephew in uh, uh, California or something like that, but you're also getting political messages. So you cannot run away from it, right? So your exposure is not driven by you anymore. It's not about opening that newspaper and going straight to the film page or the sports page, but you're opening your WhatsApp and you are exposed to this now, right? A lot of people never open their newspapers but they'll always open their WhatsApp. So the amount of uh, impression that the political, uh, the, the campaigns are making has dramatically increased. This is good news for people like me, mobilizing people to ground, right? Now, how do you take that journey into online? The commitment to participate in online uh, is a very, very big commitment to make. There are a lot of barriers. First of all, a lot of people are scared. They're afraid of speaking up. Right. If we think that a lot of people are, uh, you know, screaming, yelling on social media, abusing people and all of that, that's, let's get real. That's a very small percentage of people. The num compared to the number of people that are out there, even on social media, the number of people that do this noise is very small. Because they go and troll off some actor or, you know, somebody, they, they get undue importance and media feeds on it. You know, there was a time when social media used to be a commentary on the news media, right? We remember this. Something comes in the, in the Hindu or uh, some Times of India and now people are discussing that. Now, newspapers are discussing what's happening on the social media. Look at the cycle that's happening here. And unlike any other part of the world, in India both are growing. Social media is exploding, newspapers are also growing. It's a very strange phenomenon. I hope you guys do some study on this. I'll be very interested in reading about it. So, how do you take somebody from converting this, uh, you know, energy on online into a positive energy offline, right? And since CAB believes that you can say all you want, but you need to show up at the end of the day, right? Like as of today, today right now, some of our volunteers have gone to the local corporators with the citizen manifesto, which I hope we can show. I think Shamala was distributing here. They are going and meeting their corporator to present the manifesto to them. This is ground action. This happened entirely from social media. Right? We triggered that and we got this going and people are now going and meeting that. How did we make it happen? By creating an entire process around it. Okay, so we have um, Citizens for Bangalore. Now you belong to the South. So we invite you to join the South group of Citizens for Bangalore. So now there are some 30, 40 people there. And now you discuss, now what is the job? The job is to make sure that the manifesto copy is in the hands of every corporator. Why that? I will skip that because that's irrelevant right now. But later we can touch that. So now you are in the South group. Your job is to meet the 40 corporators in the South zone of Bangalore. Now there are 20 volunteers. And we give them empower them with a list of the corporator numbers of that zone. Start calling. Namaskara, sir. You start talking to them. You make an appointment, go do that. So now you can, and now you say that, now I will say that, hey, Divya, you know, the corporator answered my call and he's happy to receive my manifesto. Will you come? Now look at this. Now it's not some event where she's being invited, where 100 people are said going and four will show up. It is me calling her and saying, I am going at 3 p.m. to this particular street, JP Nagar, 7th phase, Putinali, next to SLV, Darshini. Can you come? Right? Now this is very difficult to resist. She knows me. We are volunteers. We are in the group together. I did all the work to connect with this guy. I am going there. So she's more compelled to act on her earlier commitments of being part of this group and volunteering and all of that. And we also make it simple, keep it simple. 
we don't tell you come at 10 we don't know when you will give appointment but we'll sit around have some coffee and then figure out if he calls then we go maybe he'll come no we want to be respectful of our time and her time too and the cooperator's time you you are interested you will take this what time okay we'll come then it will be announced so she is thinking i am cfb you know this last two weeks i haven't been very active because there's a deadline at work or whatever it is but now there's an opportunity to do some little thing to move the ball forward and anyway shrinu is calling me to meet the cooperator all i need to do is show up next to him he is going to bring a copy of the manifesto and i need to need to know the address and i'll walk there and do that and take a picture and leave so this is the the entire gamut of being part of cfb and being inspired by citizen moment coming in there joining facebook watching all the discussions participating in the volunteer meetings where we discuss this concept of why it is important for a political outreach and everybody agreed that let's take this manifesto to every politician because now we want to get into their heads we want to mess with their heads where they understand our language to do that we want to put pressure on them by giving this copy and if when i give a copy if i come and give you a corporator you don't take me seriously but if i have four divyas and three shamalas next to me like okay these people are serious about this stuff so we created this entire thing around that and then the online thing happens this is for a, a small campaign like this for a large campaign like steel fly or beda you want me to go on with this or i can come back later yeah i'll come back to this later let us continue uh, we are running a little short on time so divya if you could just give us your perspective then we can open it up to questions and then if this time at the end we can come back to this yeah sure. um so in terms of offline to off online i think my journey was also the same i i was actually um an on ground activist where i worked on um coal and energy and the nexus between coal energy and health and how um people living around coal mines and thermal power plants how you know their health is being affected and all of that um but what convinced me about digital campaigning was the unilever campaign um i'm not sure if people know about this campaign so there was um a mercury thermometer in kodaikanal where um by hindustan unilever and they had actually polluted the area um by leaving leftover uh, mercury uh, in bottles just outside in the uh, in the forests and also the workers in the factory were exposed to mercury and um so that's been a case uh for like 14 15 years now um the activists were working on it uh, approached jhatka to take the campaign online we created we worked with um uh, an artist called sofia ashraf she created this rap video called kore kanal won't um it went viral um within a few days um and you know we started uh, a twitter campaign and you know eventually uh, got the ceo of unilever who sits in the netherlands to talk about it to tweet about it and finally um few hundred uh, workers got compensated after you know years of being poisoned and their the next generation being poisoned so that was what that was the one campaign that actually convinced me about uh, digital campaigning and a, a really small uh, example of what we're doing recently about when uh, shrinivas was talking about how what motivates people to take action so we started a campaign on garbage burning in bangalore where uh, we just had a petition to our um, uh bbmp commissioner for solid waste management and health asking him to um you know implement uh the ban on garbage burning so garbage burning is illegal but there's no implementation there's no penalty so how we did this in order to so there were there were a lot of petition signatures and everything we spoke to him he was very supportive but ultimately there was a lot of um uh people were in denial a lot of people kept say, telling us nahi nahi garbage burning doesn't happen here it happens somewhere outside the city you see it in the outskirts and i was like what are you people talking about so we ultimately what we did was we um crowd sourced photos of garbage burning from people we publicized a whatsapp number said if you see garbage burning anywhere take a picture send us the location of the burning as well our tech team created a map of bangalore and plotted all of those images on a map of bangalore with the icon of like a little fire our campaign was called bangalore is burning so if you look at the map it literally looks like bangalore is on fire it was full of fire icons and that we took to the bbmp took that to the media and said listen this is what is happening you know it is a real issue and you need to address it although i do understand that garbage burning is a symptom of a larger issue of waste management but as long as this is able to trigger something in the bbmp we're happy with it so again we got some 
500 images within a few weeks because this is something that's affecting people on a daily basis. There's garbage burning happening outside a person's house. He's fed up. So he immediately takes a picture and, you know, and sends it to us in the hopes that something's going to happen. Um, and then, you know, the BBMP said, oh, we're very happy. Thank you so much for all this evidence you're gathering for us. And we want you to be our eyes and ears. It's a ridiculous uh, request, but, you know, whatever, that's fine. We're happy to do it. So we did, we gave him... <laughs> yeah, so we actually separated the photos zone-wise, ward-wise and gave it to him. And uh, still nothing much happened. I mean, he did put out a penalty order for garbage burning, but we aren't seeing it implemented, actually. And the next, the second stage of this was to actually try and get these people who sent in photos to directly talk to their ward councillor or zonal commissioner. Another thing we realized is a lot of people don't know which ward they belong to. So if you asked me a few years ago, I wouldn't know which ward I belong to. So what, again, our tech team <laughs> created a map where if you click, you go to your address, you zoom into your address and you click on anywhere in your address, it immediately pops up your ward councillor's phone number, address, everything, your zonal commissioner's phone number. So it's very easy. We created a tool for people uh, to access their decision makers' uh, contact details very easily. So through that tool, we had a few people contact them, talk to them, tell them about their issue, and come back to us with their stories. So another way technology is really helping us is to help with storytelling because even issues to be brought up on social media is a beautiful it's a beautiful way of just telling the, your story whether it's a positive or a negative story it brings it out there because earlier when i used to work on ground we used to go and take it down on pencil and paper or on a recorder and then transcribe all of that and come up with a study but that is still a, such a it's an analog process it's a long process but this you go with your phone you know click a video of somebody speaking about their issue post it online others follow, you know, create a hashtag with it, others follow. So, um, yeah, so this is, you know, one uh, interesting campaign we've been working on lately. Yeah, I think I keep having more and more questions as you guys keep talking on, but uh, I think let's open this out to the audience because we're running short of time. Uh, uh, so in the interest of time, I, I think we'll take three questions at one go, and then if there's more time, we can take three more questions after that, yeah. So uh, are there questions from the audience? Yeah, there's one at the back. Uh, this is Uh, just a question, uh, what kind of uh, response or changes have you seen from the government, uh, you know, as a result of these movements? Because one of the things that does, one can think of is that if you don't see, uh, uh, you know, any, any constructive response from them, over a period of time, the citizens also start feeling, look, really, why am I sending these photos to uh, the WhatsApp group? Can we just take two more? Uh, we can take two more questions. There's one over there. Yeah, um, I wanted to know whether uh, having less numbers to actually s like sort of move or something or to spearhead or to work on a on an issue is actually uh, a disadvantage or an advantage because we, I mean, a part of my whatever group we are, uh, I'm part of. We felt it was a disadvantage, but. Uh, Someone else said it is a it is a very big advantage because you don't have to really when you want people you bring them in but the rest of the time small number of people is fine so I really want to know what you feel about it. Any more? Ah, there's one at the back there. Okay. Uh, like you said earlier, moms weren't on Facebook, but now that they are, how do you get them involved in the sense that? It, they are completely fine to believe fake news, all the paid uh, media stuff and all of that, but when you put out something that is real, they are not really willing to believe it. So a uh, change uh, change.org petition is not necessarily signed by my mom, but she is willing to share fake news. So how do you exactly get these moms and all, all these other people who are not exactly even probably at the highest rung of the Maslow's triangle to get involved in uh, things, things like you guys are doing? Sorry, what was the first one about the results, right? Yeah. The first one was about the results. Yeah, sir. So I completely um, believe in the philosophy or thinking behind that question, right? If people don't see real, um, you know, reaction or a solution or a response to that, they lose uh, interest in being part of such such moments. So we have had uh, 
wildest success beyond our imagination right if you just walk out of the street and go left there is no steel monster there right there could have been one well half constructed dug up this entire place would have been that many of those beautiful trees on palace road would have been gone by now two years uh, 16 october october 16 2016 was the human chain if we didn't stop the steel flower beda you would have that so that that's a change and just 10 days ago uh, you have heard the honorable finance minister stand up in the lok sabha while presenting the budget and said in this year's budget we are allocating 17000 crores to bangalore suburban train have you seen that announcement that's a result of our campaign that's when that happens you have to see the cheering and the excitement in the volunteer groups that we all have right that is uh, directly connected to the, the work that we do and we pick our battles also wisely we we are not asking for the sun and the moon we are asking for suburban train which is a um, 22 year old demand in the city except that we change the game completely by showing people power in it so many people have been asking about it writing articles doing change.org we said everything that needs to be done has already been done the only thing that was not done is people power so let's get on a train so and let's get raghu dikshit on then we got mount carmel students coming joining to along with raghu dikshit now we have 1500 people getting on a train now we have every print media covering it and ndtv in india today doing a live show from the train and we got off the whitefield station there is no place to stand at whitefield station that poor station has never seen this many people descend on it in one day right now suburban train has become politically important to the point where both the major parties are fighting over each other to give funds to it to make it happen to claim their commitment to and all of that so yes results are important and we are getting results jai mahal road widening project has been stopped by us the most recent and the most fastest action that we ever did was the mg road skywalk and its whole thing happened entirely within 48 hours i would say with hardly it thought even on the ground thing that you know the on the ground thing happened little later somebody posted and i was there was a tunnel being dug in front of mg ro mg mahatma gandhi statue and on facebook uh, you know this is yet another atrocious thing who wants a skywalk there give us a button that's all you know we don't need this put this ugly structure there now we are going to see the happy birthday so and so every day and you know happy festival these are the band skywalks are used as banner poles right we all know this and not walking and also it's disgusting that we need to climb up 60 stairs and cross across and climb down instead of just crossing at the street level pedestrians are first class citizens equal to anybody who is sitting in a car or a bus or a two wheeler so we believe that the skywalks have no place in our city except in outer ring road and places like that where you can't cross so the moment we put this on social media deccan herald made it front page news next day uproar in social media about the mg road skywalk the some of the people are saying this is being done so that it can be done like this next day the honorable minister of development orders the project to be paused one week later project scrapped today the hole is being filled the most pleasant beautiful site in bangalore construction site i have seen is that thing being filled up so action is happening and we are here i am sitting here confidently and saying all these things because i have tasted blood I may be the wrong <laughs> tasted success we all tasted success in making you know change happen and it is happening and this is why you all should join us too the second question was about less less number of yeah yeah um i don't think I think there are advantages and disadvantages both ways. It, I think it also depends on your intention and what you're actually trying to achieve. For example, RWAs are quite small in number, but they're also very effective in their, um, you know, respective areas. And um, you know, when you're looking at protests and all that, yes, large numbers matter. But in terms of, like I was talking about storytelling, you don't need a lot of people to come up with their stories, even if. from one particular area say indra nagar you have 10 people coming up with their stories putting out videos people will follow i think you just need a few people to just start and then people will follow so i i don't think numbers are necessarily a bad thing small numbers are necessarily a bad thing yeah uh third question about how do you get moms on tourism yeah. 
Oh, uh, how to get moms on the on the ground? Um, <laughs> um, so I think for us, as far as I, I, at Jhatka, one thing we've seen is that um, that generation, when they come on Facebook um, and on WhatsApp, they seem to gravitate a lot more towards WhatsApp. Um, and they've been, yes, again, even my mom will send me these ridiculous messages of some fake news and I'm like, no, 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 ignore it, don't look at it, it's not true. And she'll come up with random facts and say, this is what I heard, there's been a study. I'm like, no, mom, it's no. So, but then that's also a way to see how uh, engaged they are on WhatsApp. I've, I've, I've personally, on at least from Jhatka, we've seen that that age group is more... Uh, active on WhatsApp, so engaging them on WhatsApp has been easier than on Facebook for sure. And instead of getting them to sign petitions online, it's easier to get them talking about it on uh, WhatsApp or giving a missed call or even me coming down for a meeting. Um, I think for physical meetings, I think they still believe that when you actually come on ground and you know meet with people and do something, it's more effective. So um, at least that's what that's the experience we've had at Chatka. I want to quickly add something to that. So, the, if you want to get moms or dads or grandmoms or children, you need to speak their language. You need to identify what is it that they are upset about. The Skywalks campaign, the people that are most upset about Skywalks in our city are the senior citizens. It, it disenfranchises enfranchises them. Senior citizens tell us, if you go talk to them, that our own children jail us inside the house. They won't let us walk in the evening. We cannot walk. It's impossible to walk. Walking is, uh, uh, I often write rather exaggeratedly, pedestrians are endangered species of Bengaluru, right? It's becoming like that. So if you talk to them for that. So I went to Dignity Foundation, which is a senior citizen center, talked to people, took videos. And when I made video of, of a 80 year old uh, woman who is a government teacher and you know dignity she comes to dignity foundation the anger that she has i captured that on my phone and i posted it around and it went around so many and you know if there was time i'll show you some of these things but uh, another um, saraswati ma'am i think shamala would know her she'd come from maleshwaram to richmond circle to campaign for pedestrian rights with a stick and she said, ma'am, why are you here on a Saturday afternoon? Well, it's our city. If I don't come, who will fix it? That's it. I fell down on a pavement because it was uneven. And I want to make it a point that payments need to be better. And someone told me this is happening here. They offered to bring me here and take me home. So I'm here. So all you need to know is she needs to understand this is happening and somebody needs to know what it is. I want to put up this picture because there are so many moms in our group so many women. CFB has lots and lots of women and uh, that has been a big reason uh, that of, of taking this forward is if you truly want to represent the aspirations of the city and want to fight for what is right on city, you cannot define it by yourself. Just because I have read more websites or more reports on something or I follow things like uh, EPW or IHS and things like that, I can't assume that I know what is right for the city. Right? I, I also initially thought Skybox is a good idea. Now I read, my eyes have woken up. Then I, what nonsense is this? Why, why am I climbing up? I want to cross. Right? So it takes the journey to understand that. Like uh, when we, when I met Siddharamaya, our Honorable Chief Minister, I said, sir, we need 6,000 buses. I was just telling her before the thing. 6,000 buses, sir. Space only the apa, traffic jam agate, he said. If you put more buses, there will be traffic jam. How? The, the idea of a bus is to take cars away from the two wheelers and you, you are not stopping anybody from registering a car, are you? How many cars are being registered every day, two wheelers, do you know, in Bangalore city? Take a guess, 2000. That's how we got to 74 lakh vehicles and our the highest decision makers are thinking if 6000 buses come there will be a problem, we, can't, we don't have space for that. Happily, by the time he said that and went home and next day 6,000 vehicles have been added to the roads and hardly carrying any people in them, right? So this is, I don't fault him at all. This has been fed to us. This is the thinking that everybody has. So we need to change the narrative. So to change the narrative, you need to get to the people and then connect with them in a language they understand and the, the lived experience that they have. When you do that, you have more people championing, lobbying for you and walking your path. Um, Nisha, how much time do you have? Are we out of time? 
Yeah, uh, unfortunately, we seem to be out of time, so I, uh, I can't take any more questions. But uh, I'm, uh, both of you will be around here? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, so just before we finish, I think we're just going to show uh, uh, a couple of examples of the kind of campaigns that they did. Uh, Srinivas, we just want to... Yeah, explain. thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity. This is too important for me to not talk about it. You all have a copy of it. Because CFB has been running campaign after campaign, Seal flower beda, chuk book beku, bus bagya beku. Vasanthi was on a bus from Maleshwaram to Shanti Nagar. <laughs> and when she got landed in Shanti Nagar, she saw other people landing from other places, and that's how we created a buzz for the buses, all of that. But we figured that elections are coming. So let's have some fun, right? When elections are coming, politicians are actually listening to us, little more than, or at least pretending to listen to us. So why not leverage that and try to twist their arm to make some good things happen. We don't care who comes to power. We want anybody who is in the government to do the right things for the city. So how do we do that? We came up with the Citizens Manifesto. Uh, how we came up with it, you know, is probably immaterial right now. But this is a volunteer group. That is called the Beku Beda Wall made out of, uh, I think all the greens will be thrilled with this recycled material on the back, 60 foot wall with people voting on it, putting their demands up there and all of that. And inclusive, we got many people, transgenders, we got slum kids, we got everybody, we tried and attempt for weeks to get everybody to the table because one of the other problems we have in Bengaluru is that there are people that work on some things, there are people that work on some things and these trains don't meet. They look at each other with a little bit of suspicion. So we said we are new kids on the block, we'll invite everybody and see what happens. So that worked to a large extent. So we had a truly inclusive, diverse set of people coming in. And that's how we created that. Uh, this is what happened on that day. This is one year anniversary of the Steel Flower Beda. Like uh, the gentleman was saying, it's important to people remember that success is happening. So we celebrated one year of the human chain. But we didn't celebrate, cut a cake and go home. We actually did something to commit the volunteers for the next one year too. So we did that, right? And that's the uh, result of that is what you have um, in your hand right now. And what we are trying to do between now and uh, April, end of April when the elections happen is to put tremendous pressure, and I cannot stress this word anymore, on the political parties to include these demands in their manifesto that we are going to track after the election. So we are on that mission now and we would invite all of you to come in and join this campaign, whatever way you want, whatever little time that you have, please do come. I think you will agree with most of the demands that are in there. Even if you don't, you will find some things that are more reasonable than others. So please do come. Some of the key demands are here. And that's the URL to go if you want to participate in this and then we take it from there. Thank you so much for giving me this time to do this. Yeah, thanks, Srinivas. So that brings us to the end of the panel. Uh, Divya's work is also available uh, on a website called airfilter.in. Air, air alert in, sorry, uh, air alert in. So you can also check it out there, the kind of work that she's done on air pollution. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry we went over time a little bit, and uh, but Srinivas and Divya are both here, and if you want to engage with them more, you can do so. Uh, over to you, Mr. Srinivas.